Hello and welcome to Amai Radio's Myanmar Today. I'm Michelle with the recent news and reports from around Myanmar. Wilson has the full story on real estate market in Nipido. Suema and Pitin got the latest report on traditional bamboo lending market hopes recoveries in coming dry season. Pyotiritu and Amu will give us all the details on gold leaf market expert stimulus loan package from government. Tora Suze has the details on use of digital tools become widespread in controlling COVID-19 spread. All of these reports will be coming up on Myanmar today. But for now, let's take a look at what's happening in local news. Vice President U Henry Van Thieu, in his capacity as chairman of the National Disaster Management Committee, presided over a coordination meeting on tackling possible food shortages caused by severe flood and drought resulting from global climate change. The meeting was held at the Ministry of Social Welfare, Relief and Resettlement. The vice president talked about the effects of climate change resulting in natural disasters such as strong winds, flood, severe heat and drought, as well as landslides and slight erosions more frequently in many places. He also pointed out the daily slight erosion and landslide cases at the Jaitalan Baguda in Molimian Township in 2018 and at Mella Mountain in Pound Township in 2019 and Mon State. Flood caused by damage to spillway of the dam on Swa Creek in 2018. Accident to the embankment of Shui Ge Sloop Gate near Amarapura Township in 2020 and the recent landslide incidents in Pakin. In his closing remarks, the vice president said that environmental conservation is very significant for trying to protect natural disasters, including floods and drought. He highlighted the importance of creating more fruitful land to produce more crops, rainwater harvesting, and so on. Totally 276 Myanmar migrant workers, including 166 men and 110 women, returned from various districts and regions in Thailand at their own arrangement through Thai Myanmar Friendship Bridge 2 in Miaoli Township from 6 a.m. to 12 at noon on 18 August. Most of the people among the returnees are expanded mothers, children to attend the school, People detained under different circumstances and the walkers returned due to the job cut and closure of batteries. The responsible officials of Miaudi district picked up the returnees at Mesau situated in Thai border and transported them to the quarantine centers in respective regions. Out of the people who are put into community-based facility quarantine at hostels in Molimiai of Mon State, 165 were conducted medical screenings on Monday afternoon. The health staffs, members, and Red Cross Society and rescue team members helped the conducting medical tasks. The quarantined people are screened temperature and taking their swab to do COVID-19 tasks. Those who have no infections of the disease will be transported to the relevant townships. From the 1st May to date, there are over 11,000 returnees who came back from abroad in Mon State. That's all with the local news. Now we'll move on to our first report. Due to the outbreak of COVID-19, the property market in both Yangon and Mandalay see a sharp decline in price, whereas the property market in Nipido is soaring in price. As Nebido has different approach to the property market amid COVID-19, Wilson will tell us what makes Nebido see the increase of the property price. The capital of Myanmar has a very unusual reaction to the real estate market since the outbreak of COVID-19. While other big cities in Myanmar such as Yangon and Mandalay experienced the decline of real estate market since the outbreak of COVID-19, However, Nebido surprisingly experiences a soaring price in real estate, especially when it comes to purchasing the land. Unlike big cities such as Yangon and Mandalay, the core of real estate market in Nebido is not about renting apartments, but it has to do with land purchasing and renting out the land on a basis of long-term contract. 
Umimin is the vice chairman of Myanmar Real Property Development Association, who is also the managing director of Minami Gonko Company Limited, and he spoke to my radio. After the outbreak of COVID-19, the property market has been soaring in price. The reason for the increase in property price in Nebido is in Nebido, the land plot with the measurement of 40 by 60 feet, 60 feet by 60 feet, and 80 feet by 80 feet, and 100 feet by 100 feet are still available for purchase with the price below 100 million checks which makes the property market grow really well in Nebido. If we look for the land plot in other cities like Yangon and Mendeley, the price under 100 million checks, we will be able to get the same offer like we have in Nebido. We will be able to get around 20 feet by 60 feet plot of land. We can still buy a good land in some of the townships in Nebido with the price under just 20 million checks and 30 million checks whereas we will not be able to get the same offer like this in Yangon or Manly. Comparing to Yangon and Manly, Nepido has much cheaper and many options when it comes to property. Shui Jabin, what is one of the places where the property market sees the highest rate of property sale in Nebido, according to the report, where 60 into 60 is priced between 45 million jets and 60 million jets. But it is also reported that the property market saw a dramatic price increase in Nebido after the outbreak of COVID-19, where the land which was priced at 25 million jets to 30 million jets is now priced at 45 million jets to 60 million jets. The selling price of property is also contributed to some of the people who sold their property in Yangon at higher price and purchased land in Nebido where they could get much bigger land in price-wise comparing to what they get in Yangon. But there are also some people who buy property just to observe the market. If they could find a better price, they are ready to give up the land. Umimin also talk about the challenges this sector is facing in Myanmar. Concerning the challenges we have in property sector, we Myanmar Real Property Development Association has been urging government to have property law. We even submitted the application to Lutta already but I don't think we'll get it done by this year. Other countries have property law or this property service law. So what happens when we don't have proper rules and regulations is it affects how the tax is imposed on the local business persons and foreign business person or property market. Therefore, not having proper rules and regulations for property is the main challenge in my opinion. Gozi Duwin is the project manager of Golden Gate International Company Limited and who is also currently taking the project of constructing apartment for retired civil servants under the government and he also spoke to Amai Radio on his side of story and he said. <laughs> The main challenge we have after the outbreak of COVID-19 is the shortage of labor. There are times when we could recruit only labor who had difficulty in earning for livelihood because we could not get labor as we wanted due to the fear of the virus. The outbreak of the virus also affected the flow of other products where arrivals of tools we need for construction were late which definitely affected the progress of the workflow. That's the report on real estate market in Nibida. Traditional handmade objects have to rely on 12 seasonal festivals and market demand. Among the handicrafts, those who are making traditional bamboo headlands dance are hoping a speedy market recovery. Out of the 12 traditional seasonal festivals of Myanmar, the danger event with a lightning festival is significant milestone and important symbols are paper lanterns as well. Paper lanterns are regularly made in Wazo, that means August. But this year, there are no orders yet and the market situation for handicrafts have come to an almost stop. It was reported by Zueman and Pietay. 
Traditional handmade objects have to rely on trade seasonal festivals and market demand. Among the handicrafts, those who are making traditional bamboo lanterns are hoping a speedy market recovery. Out of the trade traditional seasonal festivals of Myanmar, the Dinsu event with a lighting festival is a significant milestone, and important symbols are paper lanterns as well. Paper lanterns are regularly made in Waso, that means August, but this year there are no orders yet, and the market situation for handicrafts have come to an almost stop. Since childhood, traditional bamboo lanterns have been made. But the current moment of 2020 is the worst for those who are doing for a living by making traditional bamboo lanterns. It was by Upule, a maker of traditional bamboo lanterns. I the orders haven't come yet, but City Mart and Ocean Shopping Centers are in preparation of placing orders. Last year, our business started when the land set in. We had started touching raw materials. This year, it depends on orders. If we received the advance payment, we expect to start after buying raw materials. The raw materials will increase in price, but the price for paper lanterns can't be raised much. It will be okay if it's like 1,100 paper lanterns. The paper lanterns for from China enter our country through borders. We're going on working with the paper lanterns because of our hobby. Now we're still facing the slow outbreak of COVID-19. We are making the lanterns despite worry for COVID-19. We're making larger lanterns at the time when the COVID-19 was found in March. We had to stop our business in April. From the sound day, we have been making the lanterns and have stopped in April. I wish the COVID-19 spread will be slower and the business will return to recovery. <laughs> Pagaya in Jimidai Township of Yangon region and its environs are packed with the lantern makers and those placing orders this time every year. The market situation is decreasing a little year after year. They earn a living by doing handicraft activities for festivals, events, and ceremonies in the non-endured period. The COVID-19 outbreak is time to coincide with the period of the festivals. Since then, the handicraft works have to come a stop, and numerous difficulties still remain. Dawson Sanu is the owner of Palgam Nyama Handicraft Shop, and he spoke to MI Radio. <laughs> During this year, Myanmar handicraft and paper lantern are not going well. Although now it is the rainy season, what can start with a few orders? The paper lantern is the same matter as well. Orders are coming this time in the past, but now they have not come yet. Because of the COVID-19, we haven't received any orders so far. Restrictions have been imposed not to carry out festivities and hold social events during the outbreak of COVID-19. Now the spread of the virus has slowed down and the people help for the festivities and events. Those wishing to hold alms giving ceremonies are hoping alms giving ceremonies. The restrictions on mass gathering of the government are still in effect. Now is the season of offering wazo robes to members of Sangha. Yammer people are found of holding M's giving ceremonies. When bamboo lanterns are made, Japan and Waya bamboos have to be used as raw materials. Last year, the price of a bundle of bamboo was 2,500 just to 3,500 just. The price of the one sheet of beautiful paper was 130 jars to 250 jars. Lantern makers are worried about the possible rise of price for other related materials. They are hoping their market recovery overcoming such difficulties. That's the report on traditional bamboo lantern markets hope recovery in coming dry season. Most of the businesses suffer difficulties in the wake of COVID-19. Among them, gold foil making is one of the most distracted businesses. As government's statements of limiting the public gathering, the bagoders 
all the religious occasions and festivals have to be prohibited since early April as part of the government's cautious measures against the potential risk of COVID-19 issues. So the gold leaf market is suffering the economic impact of global pandemic. In Myanmar, glittering pagodas are the symbol of Theravada Buddhism, the religion the majority of the people believe in. The gold leaf has traditionally been most popular and most common in use of it as glittering material for decoration of the glittering pagodas. The processes of making gold leaf include manual skills. Myanmar people are always boasting for gold leaf making, which is a time honor tradition handicraft in Myanmar. Not only that, gold leaf making business is one of the tourist attractions because there are a lot of international tourists and businesses who are interested in and learning this gold file making. The gold leaf market is packed especially in Mandalay, Myanmar's second largest city. Most of the businesses suffer difficulties in the wake of COVID-19. Amanda, gold file making is one of the most disruptive businesses. As government statements of limiting the public gathering, the pagodas, all the religious occasions and festivals have to be prohibited since early April as part of the government's caution measures against the potential risk of COVID-19 issues. So the gold leaf market is suffering the economic impact of global pandemic. Gowili is a gold leaf maker from Mandalay. He told Amar Radio about the current situation faced by the gold makers. Normally we can earn around 20,000 jacks to 30,000 jacks daily. There is no work every day currently. And if there are some orders to work, we can only earn about 7,000 or 8,000 jacks. And if normally we can and around 20,000 to 30,000 just daily. There is no work every day currently. And if there are some orders to work, we can only earn about 7,000 just or 8,000 just. And not all the staff can work here. We have to work with a small number of people. In my shops, there are 13 workers normally. But now we have to divide them as separated groups and calling them alternatively. The employment opportunities for workers are losing as we have to avoid gathering of people. Still, the pagodas are closed and we don't know when they open. About 100 Goli production businesses have stopped its operation as they don't left any proper income for or for the investment. With regard to this, the daily workers who are employed in these businesses also lost their job. So the gold leaf businesses are hoping to get stimulus loan package by the government. Uso Meow, the owner of Aldecon Gold Leaf Business, said. <laughs> The investment for gold leaf making has some amount and we can only withstand over two months well with this situation but not for longer. In estimate, we should have about just 1.7 million are needed to run this business for the two months. But it has already been for five months and still we don't know when exactly the pagodas will reopen. Even if the pagodas reopen, it is not sure that gold leaf will be good in sale. Gold file making is one of the traditional craft for Myanmar. If possible, the government should think to support the gold file making business for stimulus loan package. Only then, the businesses of gold file making can keep on operating and the workers in this field also won't lose their job opportunity. This business is also crossing foreign exchanges for the country because there are a lot of international tourists and businessmen who are interested in learning this gold for making. That's the report on gold leaf market expects stimulus loan package from government. Stay with us as we bring you more reports on Myanmar today. 
Digital technology has been widely used to help limit the spread of the coronavirus. Many countries have developed different kinds of digital tools to record the health status and travel history of the people. The Beijing Big Data Center has launched a digital information tool, which is called Health Kit, to facilitate the COVID-19 control. And health codes are now part of daily life in China. In the battle against the COVID-19, many countries tend to make use of the benefit of the technology as part of the preventive measures. The applications are developed to record the health status and travel history of the people. Many of the tracing applications are aimed to show where the positive patients have gone and who they have contact with. Being a country with advanced technology, the Beijing Big Data Center has launched a digital information tool which is called Health Kit to facilitate the COVID-19 control. This is designed to help Beijing citizens and those entering or coming back to the city to check their relevant hair conditions in order to help people resume normal production and life. Using the health kit application is to ensure people haven't been to high-risk areas. It will show a proof of where they have been over the past 14 days. The Beijing's health kit application has to be used to enter venues, shopping malls, neighborhoods, workplaces, and other public areas. Mesut Damu from CRI Myanmar Department of China Media Group explained the current preventive measures at shopping malls in Beijing. Beijing has a shopping mall in a series of malls that are in a series of malls in a series of malls in a series of ဒီကိုဗစ်၉၀အတွက်ပေါ့เนาะကာကွယ်မှုတွေတော့ရှိနေတာတွေ့ရသေးတယ်အဲ့ဒါတွေကတော့ဒီရှော်ပင်းမော
The World Health Organization said on Tuesday it was concerned that the novel coronavirus spread was being driven by people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, many of whom were unaware they are infected, posing a danger to vulnerable groups. WHO officials said this month proportions of younger people among those infected has risen globally, putting at risk vulnerable sectors of the population worldwide including the elderly and sick people in densely populated areas with weak health services. A surge in new cases has prompted some countries to reimpose curbs as companies race to fight the vaccine for a virus that has battered economies, killed more than 770,000 people, uh, and infected nearly 22 million, according to the writer's tally. Countries putting their own interest had of others in trying to ensure supplies of the possible vaccines or making the pandemic worse. WHO Chief Tadro Adrenov Gabriel is said in Geneva on Tuesday. The United States and the Republic of Korea began their annual summertime joint military exercise in a skilled back manner on Tuesday amid the COVID-19 pandemic, Yonhap News Agency reported. The computer-stimulated combined command post training, originally slated to kick off on Sunday, was postponed after an officer of the ROK Army who was supported to take part in the exercise tested positive for COVID-19. The exercise will end on August 28. It is the first major exercise between the two countries this year as their annual springtime drill was cancelled due to the outbreak. A military officer said, quote, All the service members who had close contact with the officer tested negative for the virus. We've been implementing tougher quarantine and virus prevention schemes and increased monitoring by operating a spray task force. Currently, the exercise is underway without a hitch. End quote. And that's all we have for today. Thank you very much for joining me on Myanmar today. My name is Michelle. Wish you have a very good day. See you next time.